All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Herb Cohen, who is in Brooklyn Heights in New York. How are you doing, Herb? I'm doing just fine. And Herb has, for more than three decades or maybe even more, he's been a practicing negotiator intimately uh, immersed in in some of the world's leading like headline dramas from hostage hostile takeovers hostile uh, hostage negotiations your clients have been executives entrepreneurs sports theater the large corporations government agencies and you've written a number of books on on the subject of of negotiations so so herb i uh you are a definitive resource on negotiations and i'm sure you've forgotten more about negotiations than most people will ever know in their lifetime right Yes, uh, although I haven't forgotten that yeah, much. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, the awkward experiences. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You remember them forever. Very good. So, um, so Herb, what, is, what are some of the... When people come to negotiate in the first place, uh, I don't think negotiations is something that comes naturally to most people. I mean, a lot of us think maybe that we're good negotiators, but we don't really know what we're doing. What are some of the mistakes that people make when they approach uh, negotiations in the first place? Well, initially, they believe that uh, it is something that's very narrow. They see it, they use the metaphor of the pie, Mm. and they think, well, here's a pie with 12 slices, and if I get six, they get six. I'm going to try to get eight and hold them four. So they see it as a competitive game, and that's really not what it is. Uh, Actually, you know, if you take the pie metaphor, I may like the crust and you may like the apple Mm -hmm. slice inside. And so you can generally work things out where both sides gain and both sides benefit. Yeah. So, uh, so um, I, I like what you're saying there. So, but and, and I think that's true, and I think that's unfortunately true business and life that people tend to look at things as finite as opposed to, you know, there's yeah. enough there for everyone. Um, but also tell me, uh, people, people generally, very few people love the negotiations phase, right? Negotiating is something that's learned. I didn't start out as a negotiator Mm -hmm. and uh, you learn it it's a skill that you acquire and the way you acquire it is by practicing it Uh, probably the first things that people should remember is that virtually everything is negotiable Mm -hmm. because something is the product of a negotiation that's how it came about a price right Uh, about like tiffany's which people say gee can't negotiate at Tiffany's. Oh my God, you know, uh, it's like untouchable. It's holy ground. Yet, how did they establish the price? They're charging $8,000 for the ring. And uh, the salespeople said, hey, let's make it seven. We'll sell more rings. <laughs> uh, the accounting financial people said, no, make it nine. We'll make more profit. And they worked it out. And ultimately, they came up with 8000 Mm-hmm. Which the then price at seven thousand nine hundred ninety <laughs> sounds better. Yeah. So point is, if something came about as a result of a negotiation, of course it's negotiable. And if you start to think, virtually everything came about as a result of the negotiation. The only thing that didn't are religious and ethical, or moral principles. Right. Other than that everything's negotiable. In fact, I wrote a book, You Can Negotiate uh, Anything, which uh, has been translated into 36 languages. Yeah. And it's probably the world's, world's biggest selling book on negotiating and selling. Selling is a negotiation. Anytime you're attempting to influence someone's behavior, uh, you're negotiating. We mm-hmm. negotiate kids, we negotiate with banks, we negotiate with our boss, we negotiate with subordinates. Mm -hmm. Life is a series of negotiations. And if you learn how to play this game, you end up 
being much more satisfied and living an enriched life. Yeah. So you say in your book, you can negotiate anything. There's three crucial steps to success. What are those steps? Well, I said there's three things. There's information, and the mm. more you get, the better off you are. The, the next is time, and the third is power. And people always have more power than they think they have. We always underestimate mm -hmm. ourselves. Uh, for example, as a prisoner in solitary confinement, you know, and they take away your shoelaces and your belt. So the guy's walking around, he's holding up his pants, you know, he's got no shoes, mm -hmm. and he craves a cigarette. He goes to the door, he knocks on a steel door, the guy opens up, what do you want? And the guy says, well, I like a cigarette, but bam, the guard slams the door. <laughs> he comes back, he does it again, the guard opens up, I just told you, no. He said, look, if I don't get a cigarette from you within the next minute, I tend to bang my head up against that concrete wall till I'm bloody and unconscious. And when they revive me, I'll swear that you did it. <laughs> One cigarette, I won't bother you again. Now, can the guy get that cigarette? Sure. Yeah, sure. Probably get a cup of coffee as well. <laughs> the point is, even in a powerless situation, you've got more power than you think you have. Yeah, so that's great. I'm writing that down just in case I ever find myself in solitary confinement, uh, that I know exactly how to get a cigarette going forward. But uh, um, I like the point, though, er, her because I do think, and this is something I think a lot of salespeople experience, like they love the sales process and all of that, and they feel, re but, but as it gets down to the end and it gets into the negotiation process, as you say, they start to feel like they, like the buyer has all the power and they have no power left, right? And that's when they start, you know, offering up discounts before anybody even asks for them. So how do you, how do, how do you help people in that situation take a step back and say, no, no, this is, you know, there's, there's power on both sides of the table? Well, well, first of all, let me just digress for a moment mm -hmm. and say, Selling is really today a honorable, uh, skilled profession. Yep. Because when you're in selling, other than other jobs in corporations where I was, in selling, one, you get ownership of the results. You did it. Okay. Number two, you get instant feedback. Mm -hmm. Right. Then in other jobs in corporations, staff jobs. How do you know how you're doing? Well, I'll have my performance appraisal in six months. And the boss calls you in and tells you, and he says things to you like, remember five months ago you thought you were doing well? Well, you weren't. <laughs> uh, and the, the third thing is one ownership results, uh, uh, feedback, and uh, uh, an opportunity uh, to take risks. And so if you're in sales, you really can be very independent. I was in corporations and selling positions, and I could arrive late. Uh, I would park my 10-year-old uh, car in the CEO's place because <laughs> I didn't want to walk, and I got away with all that stuff. Why? Because I was a high producer. Yeah, yeah. So selling is fantastic. And selling involves negotiation. Other than that, you're an order taker. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you work for Apple and you have 8,000 new, new uh, iPods, uh, iPads, 8,000 new ones, and it's the new uh, number 16 model, yep. and you got uh, 30,000 people that want them, you're not selling, you're taking orders, you're filling out slips. Yeah. Uh, selling involves skill. Uh, it involves determining what the needs of the customer are and satisfying those needs. And a lot of that is done by your style, how mm -hmm. you approach people. And the best way to approach a customer if you're in selling is in a congenial, cooperative fashion with what I call a low key pose of calculated incompetence. So run, to, run that by me again, that sentence, say. You want to approach people in an amicable fashion with a low key, low key pose 
of calculated incompetence. Right. In other words, listen to the other side, find out what they want, ask questions rather than give answers, even take notes. Because people love when someone's writing things down. Mm -hmm. will say to me, but if you're dealing with a moron, you're saying, oh, I should write down what he says. More important to write down what a moron says <laughs> than the first, because you're the first guy that ever wrote down anything you ever said. <laughs> what know. you're doing is, if you're a real professional salesperson, you're finding out what your customer's needs are, and you're shaping your product, your service, whatever you have, to meet those particular needs. Mm -hmm. He's satisfied and you're satisfied. In fact, you never approach people in a condescending way. The opposite is true. Mm -hmm. In negotiation, selling dumb is better than smart. Inarticulate is better than articulate. You want to train yourself to say, I, I, I don't know. I don't understand. Could you could you help me? I'm kind of new at this. And let the other side help you. Let the other side, your customer virtually mentor you through this deal. <laughs> you will become a much more successful person. Now, in fact, I have what I call the magic words of selling. These are three letter words. Mm -hmm. First word is spelled H U H. And that's pronounced, huh? <laughs> Second word is W-H-A-T. Uh, W-H-A, no T on it. Right. And it's pronounced, wah. And I integrate the door, oh, wah. And <laughs> it really helps me. See, one of my strategies in negotiation and selling is to make the other side feel superior to me. Right. In many cases, you have to work very hard. <laughs> but nevertheless, it pays off. And so your style, your manner, your demeanor is more important than the content, the price of this transaction. And many salespeople think, well, I didn't get it because right. the price is too high. If we cut the price. But in reality, uh, you know, there's an old saying when people get annoyed, they say, well, it's not what they said it's the way they said it mm -hmm. and so if you look at your most successful salespeople, most successful negotiators they have a style a manner that other people relate to they feel mm -hmm. comfortable with them yeah and it's true i mean they always say that people remember how you made them feel not really what you said it's the same if you can give an hour-long speech uh and people may not remember practically anything you said, but they go, well, oh, that was good. I really liked, you know, yes. I really felt that was engaging. And so um, I, I take what you're saying about sales, number one. I think it's a, it's a very good point. It's a fantastic profession. It's unfortunately, it gets a bad rap because popular culture loves to present it in a particular way. Um, but this idea of a win-win, because uh, sometimes people uh, mistakenly think that, if you don't come away with more than the other person in a negotiation that you somehow lost? No, that's uh, not true. First of all, the last thing you negotiate is the quantifiable item. Mm -hmm. You save that to the end and you get people to invest in the relationship. See, if I start out collaborative or cooperative, even if the other side thinks, gee, this guy's weak, I'm going to conquer and destroy him. I'm going to get more pieces of the pie because he sounds funny. You know, and look at me. He looks funny. He don't look like a top overpowering executive. You know? And so what happens is they invest in the relationship. And once people invest, it's hard for them to divest. You know, rats and human beings are this in common. The more energy expended in pursuit of a particular goal, the more desirable that goal becomes. And so once people invest, it's hard for them. And uh, so if you kind of remember this, you know, the emphasis upon your manner, your demeanor, it really helps you succeed. 
Yeah, and and I think that's and I think that's true. So I think it's uh, and like I said, because if you're a salesperson and you're negotiating with customer, it's you know for the customer, it's it's also uh, uncomfortable for many customers because they you know sometimes if they're not bringing in like procurement or something. They're not. They're not buying every day no. of the week, and they're not negotiating. So they're not. A, they're not skilled at that either. Look, people want to establish relationships. In fact, the best people in our society, who all of us are exposed to, are great negotiators. Who start out as great negotiators. The only people are children. Mm. Uh, if you have kids, if you have contact with children nieces, nephews, you know that kids who are little people in a big person's world Mm -hmm. who technically have no authority or power seem to get a lot of what they want. How do they do it? Number one, kids aim high. They come in with unrealistic excessive (laughs) All right? So they affect the thinking of the parent who they're trying to influence. Uh, the second thing the kids do is they believe that no is not really a final answer, but it's an opening bargaining position. <laughs> so you tell a kid no, five minutes later he's asking you again, and you know, did I tell you no? <laughs> it's it's never over with this child. The third thing kids do is they form coalitions. In other words. They say, who can influence the decision maker? The parents are the decision makers, Mm -hmm. Uh, grandparents. So they form coalitions with the grandparents against the parents. In fact, uh, it's easy for them to form that coalition because they have a common enemy, the parents. (laughs) And what kids do is they persist. They persevere. I and my wife, we are the parents of three children. Mm-hmm. First child, we had these standards and rules, very little exception. Second kid, we have many more exceptions. Third kid, we were tired people. <laughs> we're saying to the third kid, hey, why don't you ask your brother and sister? <laughs> they'll tell you how it used to be around here. And so if we adopt the model of children, just that. We're going to be more successful. Uh, I love that, Herb. This is a great, great, great way to finish here. So it's uh, it's aim high, form coalitions, and be persistent. Yeah, that, and yeah. and obviously it's a win win. Yeah, because it's a win win at the end of the day, anyway. Because the kids are happy, parents are happy, life is good, grandparents are happy. Yes. Well, listen, Herb, this has been fantastic. Um, before we go, just would like to if you want to take a, um, a moment to tell people a little bit more about how they can contact you and learn more. Probably the best way to contact me is via email. Uh, Herb, H-E-R-B, C-O-H-E-N, Herb Cohen, uh, 427 at gmail.com. Great. And uh, listen, Herb, it's been a fantastic, been a pleasure interviewing you. Um, I was really looking forward to it. I'm glad we were able to to make this work. And uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. I'll see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you, John.